Hey, welcome back everyone for some more Spyro and to the Dragonfly for the PlayStation 2. And now we're off to Jurassic Jungle, which is the final level in the game before we face Ripto, and I am really looking forward to this one. I'm really excited about this. Hooray! You did it! My contraption is breaking! Step right in and it will transport you somewhere really cool. At least, I think it will. Boy, that's real encouraging. <laughs> Yay, we made it! Aha, Spyro! The R-1000 and the T-Rex 1000s have escaped from their inescapable cages and are running amok through the jungle! Please stop them before they destroy the rest of the science labs and all of our research! No problem! But say, what's a R-1000 something something? Well, to put it in simplified terms that even a dragon can understand, they're mechanically enhanced nanotech proportion oriented riptops, which uh, we've been working on here in our labs. Uh, quite a state of the art, I might add. Oh, really? And how exactly would I go about destroying these things? Well, we did find a flaw in the R1000 models when they were uh, exposed to sub zero temperatures. Perhaps that information will come in useful light. No problem. I have just the right breath to chill them out. Great! On the other hand, the T-Rex 1000s are quite vulnerable to electricity. Yet we've not been able to get close enough to them to zap them with an electrical charge. We're going to be using the electric breath for the majority of this level. You just... Oh, come on, Spyro. <laughs> But yeah, this, you know, for this being the final level before you face the final boss, this isn't as long as what you would think in, in terms of length of the level. This is actually quite a short level. It's kind of, a, in a way, kind of like Monkey Monastery, how short that one is. I'm not sure that one's as short or shorter or maybe slightly longer, but it's not real long for it to being the final regular level here. And here are the uh, T-Rex 1000 that Dr. Whiskers was telling us about. But yeah, in order to get to Jurassic Jungle, you have to get at least 65 dragonflies, which is going to take a little bit of work, but as long as you get at least 6 or 7 dragons per level, you should be able to get here, so... Next your life this early in a level? Well, that can't be good. <laughs> now, these glides over here shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I gotta be honest, in a way, this level kind of reminds me of Jacques, the uh, Dreamweaver's boss level in uh, the first Spyro game a little bit. It's just a really fun level to play. And I also have a confession to, ma uh, a confession to make, and that is... I kind of wrote down benchmarks for how many gems I can get in each section or how many I need. So, if it's gonna... If it seems like that after I'm done this level that I go by quicker than usual, if I do, then that shouldn't be much of a surprise, which... If I have these notes here and I still find a way to do a lot of backtracking, that's pretty stupid on my part. <laughs> And I like the whole concept of this temple here. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Metalhead from uh, Beastmaker's World from the first game, too. As a matter of fact, that's the only level from the Beastmaker's World that I actually like. But I just felt like this level was on the same boat as Thieves Den, in which I think both mazes would have been mind-blowingly awesome if uh, Universal Interactive would have let the developers spend a little bit more time on this. And even as it is right now, it's still a pretty awesome level. Oh! Oh, that was just plain dumb on my part. Okay, just gotta go down here and... You'll probably w recognize these lizards as being the same ones that were on Skelos Badlands on Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. And then make sure that you go around this pyramid here, make sure you pick up any loose gems. 
Okay. Just gotta back, go back here. Be careful here, or those uh, geysers and that that are coming out of the lava will hurt you, so. Okay, I'm right where I need to be, and here's another T Rex 1000. As far as the R1000, we won't get to see those until later on in the level. They actually don't sound as intimidating. They're actually not as intimidating as they sound, is what I should say. There's not a whole lot of them either. As a matter of fact, they make up part of a challenge, which earns you a dragonfly once you quit. That was a risk right there. <laughs> probably shouldn't have jumped out. I probably should have waited, but I'm glad I didn't get hurt. And there's another professor right there, and as soon as I get this gem, I'm going to go over and see what he has to say. Steel Flash, three days. They're following us. This Spyro, I've been studying this temple, and it's quite fascinating. Oh yeah? How so? Well, I believe that these strange drawings on the walls are a clue to something hidden away in this temple. But I can't quite decipher them yet. <laughs> Yes, and from what I have been able to decipher, it seems that the gems on the statues inside react to heat. Perhaps you can figure out the rest, Byro. Professor Copeland just gave us a prompt for a uh, dragonfly challenge, which we're going to do on this video because it really doesn't take all that long and it's not all that hard. It is pattern based, so you have to make sure you get the right pattern. And see, we need six more of those uh, rip docks left to. Uh, defeat. And Professor Copeland, he's probably named after Stuart Copeland, the guy that did the soundtrack to this game and all the other classic Spyro games. It's a nice tribute to him, and I think the guy deserves it. I mean, no matter what you may think about the Spyro games, or I don't know how you would not like them, but no matter what you think of them, you do have to admit, he did a fantastic job doing the scores for all those games and that, so... It may be a small tribute, but it is one nonetheless, and one he definitely deserves because the music is is one of the things that made the classic Spyro such good games, especially for me. Now we're gonna. Oh, I forgot a gem. Uh, Chester, rather. And see that I'm ready to. I'm doing these uh, crystals right now, and as you can see, there's a pattern going on, which. Red was the first, then green, then blue. And then I'm gonna go on to purple here, and then the last one is gonna be yellow. And there we go! And there's our dragonfly, and... It should be rather easy to get as, as soon as I get my bubble breath here. Just gotta go over here. Hey, it's Scarlet! For a dragonfly named Scarlet, you think it would be red, not yellow, but... Oh well. <laughs> but, uh... As you see, the ice breath there that I use in that lizard, but, uh... But yeah, now that we got that dragonfly, all we need to do now is pretty much get the top layer of this, uh... Temple here, and... Might as well finish things off here before I quit this video and take a bit of a refreshing pause, but, uh... There's another T Rex 1000. Okay, gotta get you. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, Spyro. Should have had him right there. Oh, come on. Okay, this time I'm not blaming the dragonfly, I'm, bra I'm blaming the dragon. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> Doompa? <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I have to admit, that is the goofiest name I've heard of a dragonfly on this game. And I gotta be honest, uh, um, whenever I was doing Cloud9 on my own time, I got this one dragonfly and his name was Tashi Station and I thought that was freaking weird. And for those... Uh, as soon as I... Oh, come on. <laughs> See, I'm not even concentrating right now because I get kicked out of the name, but... 
But yeah, a Tossie station. Anybody that's fans of Star Wars should know that's uh, one of the places that Luke referred to on uh, Episode 4, New Hope, so... It's a little bit of a Star Wars tribute there, which I think is pretty cool. Tossie station, what a name. <laughs> and not as bad as Doompa, though. And there we go, there's a key, and uh, you probably noticed the chest earlier, I don't think I mentioned the chest, but you probably saw it, it was right by the pyramid that I entered in here, but... Or should I say ziggurat? It's, ziggurat is actually a pyramid with steps, so technically it's a ziggurat. Okay, there's still a few more gems in here I need to get. I went to get them on ledges here. Just gotta go here. Okay, I think I got everything here, and I'm just gonna... Oh, come on. <laughs> Spyro. Like I was gonna say, uh, just need to finish things up here in this temple, and I think I'm gonna take a refreshing pause, so... Not too much longer here. Of course, to get even higher ground right here. And make sure you get these gems down here, whatever you do. I mean, they're not that hard to miss, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. Because you certainly don't want to backtrack, which... This level isn't too bad if you do have to backtrack, but still... Why do it whenever you can prevent it by be being extra careful of what... and be extra, um... cautious of what you're looking at, and then... Thought I wasn't gonna make that. <laughs> Always good to keep your eyes peeled from the, no matter if it's the first level or the last level. Always make sure you keep your eyes open for stuff. Okay. Don't let this bridge scare you. There's much scarier ones further on. <laughs> oh, I just love this level. You know, I don't think I've ever loved a level that was close to the final boss as much as this one. I'm trying to think offhand of a game where I like the next to last level. Okay, just gotta go across here. Certainly gives you plenty to look at and plenty to do here. I do gotta give them that. Okay, just gotta get this. And there we go, and I think I'm gonna pause here, so for watching this, and I will see you guys again next time.